What's going on, Mother Truckers? Welcome to the Asian My Show. So today we have a special guest. We have Nick in the house. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing all right, bro. We were just bull, bull crapping before we got started, and now I got to get my serious face on. Hey, no, hey, my... we keep game it face, lovely. Bro. Game hey, face. Hey, we keeping it lovely. <laughs> we keeping it friendly, man. We just making this happen. We're gonna wait a couple minutes, anyways, until uh, you know maybe my grandma might jump on. I remember I like when I did my first live, bro. Um, my mom and my dad and me and then my girl were the first ones to jump on. So I was like, dude. I got four people on my mind, dude. <laughs> this is I great. And then I look back, I go, wait a minute. It was just me on my own phone and my family, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's how it starts, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, before we even, like, get into the interview and doing all this and get into this little training uh, session that we got going on, we'll wait for a couple people to jump on. And believe me, Nick, people watch the replays. So, yeah. you know, even if five people jump on now on the replay, you, you'll you have a, at least a thousand people eyes on you. So, you know, before anything, tell me a little bit about yourself, brother. Like, what are you about, man? Ah, uh, man. Well, um, shoot. I mean, I'm a truck driver, right? I mean, that's kind of like to be on the age of my show. I think you kind of got to be that first. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I'm um I'm also a, a pastor. I'm a father of four, um, four kids, four beautiful kids. And uh, wow. yeah, so I'm I'm frozen on my screen. Am I coming through OK? Yeah, yeah. I see you good. I see you. All, all right. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so when you say see, so you're flipping me 180. So truck driver, pastor. So how did this happen, man? I mean, before we get into this, how did you become a pastor? Now I don't even want to curse at all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, I, my dad, when I was 12, my dad was an alcoholic and him and my mom were about to get a divorce. And then, um, they started going to church, bro. And that was all I needed was to see their life changed and flipped around. My dad began pastoring the church that he was at, um, three years after he became a Christian. So I just couldn't do anything, but, but trust that, that, uh, God was real and that his word is true. And so, um, so yes, yeah, so that got me down that path. I actually left truck driving. I learned how to drive when I was 22 and I had it all set up to actually go into hazmat tankers and, and start my career. Um, but I had an opportunity to be in ministry. And so I actually left truck driving alone. Um, I, I had my, uh, my, my permit and I'd already learned how to drive. I just had to actually go and take the test to get my license, to get my CDL. And I decided yeah. not to do it. And, oh. uh, yeah. So I pursued ministry for a while and then um, I decided I could do ministry and truck driving uh, with the church I'm at now. Um, I'm just a, a, an associate pastor. I'm not, I don't preach every week or nothing like that. So I just, um, yeah, I'm on the board and I, I help make decisions and I keep in contact with people and make sure that, uh, you know, everyone, everyone feels the love when they come to church. Um, right, and hey, then uh, Us truckers then, need that, man. Well, you're yeah, driving, but, <laughs> I might have to give you a call, man, because I'd be feeling hey. down sometimes, you know? Anytime, bro. Anytime. I'd love to. Hey, I love that. So uh, for the people watching right now, we're here with Nick. We're going to get into this training session. Uh, definitely about how to get into Hazmat Tanker. But the here's the interesting thing besides him being a pastor. Right here. Now, the thing about Nick, too, is he has a YouTube channel. And he wants to let people know that they don't have to go just over the road. So, you know, before we get into that, you know, me being who I am, I put together just a, a little, a little PowerPoint just so that we could talk a little bit about the myths that people have and what are their thoughts about this because people feel like they have to go over the road. And so let's jump into this real quick and then let me know what your thoughts are about this as well, Nick, because, you know, you have the experience and you want to show people on your channel that they can make it without having to go OTR, right? Yeah. So the channel is trucking California with Velox 18. Um, Velox 18 is just my, my DBA, my trucking company name that I lease on with. But um, yeah. So my main, my main thing is I'm a father of four. Uh, when I started truck driving, I only had three kids. And then we had our fourth right around the time I started truck driving, but um, I never went over the road. I did do some regional stuff, but I did that for four months. Uh, other than that, um, I got my CDL through a company that uh, that did some local work, and then um, I ended up at the company I'm at now with only about six months experience and uh, stayed home. I get to come home to my family every single day. I get to kiss my kids on the head and and tell them good night or good morning, oh. you know, whichever that my schedule allows. Um, yeah, I don't jealous, I don't miss bro. much, bro. 
Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm jealous, man. So here it is, people. You know, a quick shout out to Nick. You know, follow his journey because he's gonna let you know how to get into Hazmat Tanker. And right now, uh, I I am his thirtieth subscriber. So Woo! there we go. Yeah, let, let's get it. You know what I'm saying? And so when I'm looking at this now. I want to go over this PowerPoint real quick, and then you tell me your thoughts about this because I know I do the clickbait thing a little bit, and we talk about how to make a hundred thousand dollars working local with no experience in trucking has Matt Tanker. But here's the thing: this is the disclaimer: you're gonna have to work your butt off to make any type of good money in anything you do in life. But in this training session, we're gonna show you, and from the stories from Nick, him working it now how he built up the money and how he's doing it and never going over the road. So first thing first, tell me what your thoughts are about this. And did you have these same thoughts, Nick, the myths about getting your CDL, you have to sign a contract to get your CDL via mega carriers or whatnot. What, what were your thoughts about that as well? Yeah. Well, my, my first time I was going to get my CDL, uh, I had a leg up, my father-in-law trained me how to drive. So I learned how to drive with him and I was just going to get my CDL because he has a truck and I could use it to take my test. And he taught me everything I needed to know. But I, I turned that down. Nine years went by. He relocated. So now I'm, I'm out here in the central Valley of California. And uh, I decided I wanted to get back into truck driving. Well, there's a, there's a local tomato grower, well, tomato processing plant, called Morning Star Trucking. If you want to uh, come out to California and get your CDL, um, write that down. Morning Star Trucking. Morning. So for the for the people that are jumping in right now or on the replay, Morning Star Trucking, write yep. that dang thing down because write it down. sounds like they'll give you a chance. And um, before you get into too much, you know, people have this myth about having to go over the road and that local jobs won't hire people. And – Here's the crazy part about this. I don't know if you knew this, Nick, but you actually have one of the highest paid jobs, bro. I was researching like crazy about the highest paid uh, jobs. And the first thing that comes up, of course, is ice road truckers. But yeah. when it comes down to it, they say hazmat tanker, heavy haulers, private fleet, LTL, and food service, and all the niche haulers, oil, car, movers like myself, uh -huh. and expediters, and you know, carrying explosives or whatnot. Those are the people making the crazy money. So if you guys get a chance to watch this, dude, I'm telling you, you're going to learn a lot and you can stay local, man. So what was that company one more time, brother? Morning Star Trucking. Morning Star Trucking. So that yep. sounds – how big is their uh, uh, fleet? Uh, well, here's the thing, man, because they're, they're mainly a tomato processing company, right? And then at – for three months during the summer, from July 1st to sometime in October, they just need to harvest every ripe tomato that they can from Bakersfield all the way up to north of Sacramento. And so they rent like 300 trucks or something like that from every dealership they can get a rental from. And wow. they hire about 500 drivers to just rotate into those trucks all day long. And uh, so you do have to have a commitment with them, but it's a three-month commitment instead of a one-year or two-year like the mega carriers. And – uh, if you live here, you you can you know obviously you just drive yourself to work each day, um, but they also have a driver's room, a, a driver's quarters, like a bunk room. So if if you did want to relocate for three months, come out mm -hmm. here, you could stay right there. They actually park a taco truck next to that bunkhouse for the whole <laughs> season. You could get your fill of tacos, your your you know your California, your Cali Mex, and you could uh, you could get your CDO and you could just make make money. And you make, I mean, between like. <clears throat> I think I was taking home like thirteen hundred a week um, take home, and then they wow. give you a bonus, and then they give you a bonus at the end of the season. So your first job straight out the gate, you're making like decent money, and they give you a bonus at the end as long as you don't wreck their stuff. And you know it's like a safety bonus at the end of the three months, and um, so they give you like an extra three or four thousand depending on how many loads you did. And then uh, yeah, it kind of jump starts your career, and then so you just gave up three months of your life because you're working six, seven days a week, you know, every week. Right. It's hard. It's really hard, but it's only three months, man. It's like. It, you just you just go gung ho, and then all of a sudden you're you just you stacked up some cash, you got yourself going. Um, you know you were only a company driver. You went from being zero, nothing, looking for work on Craigslist, yeah. trying to look for a job, to yeah. now you got you got some chips stacked. You got some you know you got your first job 
uh, experience it. and you and you're ready to rock and roll man dude like, I, I love that man and here's the yeah. thing is that, uh where is that exactly so for the people that are jumping on now <laughs> uh where is that exactly moon moon star trucking that's out in cali uh morning star what, yeah morning morning star. star morning morning star trucking is out in california what part of california is that i i was hesitant to say because it's actually in a town called los baños which yes means the the toilets yeah the yeah yeah <laughs> Hey, hey, so there we go. All, so you know how many people from from Cali, from Stockton, from Sacramento, from the Bay Area, if you're in that area, you could go to this company. So if you didn't get the 100%. name, watch on the replay. Now, here's a question for you, Nick. Can people duplicate this and get their CDL locally somewhere in a, another state? Is it possible? What would you recommend them do? Honestly, I would call every local company. Just look for the, the, the companies that have day cab trucks. If there's no sleeper on it, mm -hmm. call that company. Find out what they need because there's a shortage of truck drivers. You keep hearing it over and over again. Uh, these companies are, are hurting for people and they don't advertise like the way that, that uh, mega carriers do. They don't have the recruiters. They don't have the, the, some of the programs and things that, that these mega carriers do to try and get these, get these people in. So, I, that's what I would do. I mean, I only know my experience from right here in California, from from Northern California, and uh, so I don't know who else might do it in other parts of the of the country. But I know right. in certain parts of the country, there's seasons everywhere, right? I mean, there's busy seasons no matter if you're down in Florida or if you're up in Washington. You got apple season up there. Like it, the whole country, there's there's different agriculture seasons, different harvest seasons, and different things that go on at certain times of the year. And during those times, man, they just need drivers. They need butts and seats. And so if you go in there and you you can you know smile at them, yeah, you know you you, you present yourself well enough. I mean, you don't got to be like you know all tie and buttoned up, but I mean, as long as you can you can they can look at you and see that you're serious about a career. Um, you know they'll 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 put you in a truck, man. And and um, I think it's possible some of these places. I I've heard of companies, smaller companies, that will actually pay for you to go to school if you you know if they if they think you're worth it. That you know they'll they'll train you or they'll have one of their guys like. Uh, sometimes we have guys that are kind of slow um, on a haul that, that, that they're on because they do containers at the, at the place that I work and they'll have a guy spend like two or three months training someone. Mm. And, and, and so you're like, man, they could have gotten their CDL in that time. Now they, those guys usually already have their CDL, but they just partner them up so that they get to know everything that they, the company does so that they can be experts when they get out of that trainer's truck and into the, you know, in, into their own truck or they, or they buddy them up where they're, following each other around and it's just kind of that every every small company is going to do it different but yeah man they, i i would call every company with, with day cabs uh, right. that, that that serves your local area and right. just call them up and find out if they'll if they'll help you out and get you in a truck man so it sounds like nick you had the hustle boss you had the hustle so any of you mother truckers right now we got about 100 people watching us live they like seeing your pretty face you know yeah. when i'm on a live by myself i get about five people so i'm happy <laughs> to have you here nick you know today so here's the thing people you gotta hustle hard everyone always says oh hit up a mom and pop spot what do you do you call one place they don't pick up the phone because they're mom and pop. They are the dispatcher. They are the one parking people. They're the valet person. They're the broker. They're the everything. So do the hustle. And I'm telling you, you can't just let one no get past you because I see that all the time. So here's the big question. And a lot of people think that this is impossible. I get this all the time, Nick. Oh, I got to start at Swift first. I got to start at night. I got to start at Schneider. And I got to work there for two years. After two years of having my hazmat, then I could find a tanker job. And so you talked about how you got your, uh, your tanker basically with really little experience, you know. And yeah. so is it possible for people with no experience to get a local hazmat trucking job and what are your thoughts? Any examples at all? Yeah, I mean, I, I had very little experience when I jumped into it, um, but I thought I was kind of special because uh, my brother already <laughs> worked for the company. My brother already worked for the company, and so I, I thought, well, they they just hooked me up, you know? Because I got you, uh, some money here. Here's yeah. twenty dollars <laughs> right here. Get, exactly, get my brother right. in. Get my yeah. brother in. Right? And, and so like, I, yeah. Yeah. So then I started talking to some of the guys that I'm working with. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, I've only had my license for six months, but, um, you know, they, they, they hired me just cause my brother works here. And then the guys were like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. I, 
I, I was I was in county down the street and I saw the silver trucks driving by. So when I got out of county, I went over there and applied for a, a job. I had to go get my CDL first. But as soon as I got my CDL, I applied for a job. And then uh, I started with no experience, zero experience. And, uh, you know, they started them on a couple different um, things just to get a little bit county. of driving experience. Yeah, from right, county, county. To, to hazmat, bro. <laughs> from county to hazmat, straight up, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> So, hey, so whatever you thought, you thought your brother was in, so you thought you got in, but that wasn't the yeah. case. They were going to nope. take anyone with a pulse at that point, right? Pretty much, bro. You know. So, hey, so I'm telling you people, man, this is a story right here that you guys got to take advantage of, man. Get the energy, get hyped up. If you don't live in California, well, if you do live in California, Nick actually has a YouTube channel. He could plug you. You can reach out to him and he'll tell you straight up where he's working, what he's doing, you know, but if you don't live in Cali, Dude, these stories aren't just one-off stories, man. You know, I've heard these things before, but you got to hustle, right? You got to yep. talk to these mom and pop places. And I like what you told me, brother. You got to look for places that just have the day cabs and not the sleepers, right? That's how you know, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's. I can think of like four or five that got probably – uh, 60 to 100 trucks that that are in our area between you know Stockton and and like Merced that they do they're out on these highways all day every day and you can see them driving by and you just you know make a mental note or, or take a picture with your phone or whatever you're doing don't be unsafe while you're driving people uh, but uh, <laughs> but you know like you can see the 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 trucks with the day cabs and you can just be like oh okay I'll hit them up oh okay I might I yeah. might see see what they see if see what their gig is. Cause they might even tell you, Hey, well, why don't you go and get your license and, and, uh, get, go over here for like three months. And then after you do that, then, then you can come on with us. You know, you never know that's what okay. people... that's a blueprint though. Exactly. Exactly. So you gotta, you gotta just get in there and get in front of people, man. Like the, these trucking companies are still old school. Like, yeah, the mega carriers, it's easy to sit on your phone and, and apply for a job. Right? right. That's how every, that's how every, you know, everyone does it. Except for these small trucking companies, mid-sized trucking companies, you walk in, you talk to a dispatcher, you talk to their compliance officer, you talk to their hiring person, you talk to the owner in some cases, and you say, hey, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to get a job. I don't have my CDL yet, but I'd like to get it. Is there any way you guys can help me get it? You never know, man. Like, if you present yourself well enough, they could they could just say right on the spot, like, yeah, let's do this. I'll go talk to my friend down here. Everyone in trucking's got connections, right? And, and they're the ones who can get you connected with the, the people you need. And, and when you get someone in, in your corner that, that's rooting for you, the, the sky's the limit, bro, in trucking. You can turn your life around like, like that. I mean, I was unemployed. I was looking for work. And uh, that's why I went, came back to truck driving. Um, yeah. you know, I, was, I was looking for a way to provide for my, my, well, three kids at the time. But now I got four. So, you know, I got a lot of mouths to feed. So that's, that's how, that's how hey, I got back yeah. into it, man. And so everyone's got to get their got to get their money somehow. And, and trucking's a good way, man, a, a, a great way to get your life you know, going. And it's hard. Don't get me wrong. It's hard. But you put in the work, you get paid for it usually. Hey, and I, and I love that. And for the, uh, you know, the 127 people or whatnot that are watching this live right now, uh, we're here with Nick. He's actually a, a proud father of four. You know, he's a happy look at that smile. The dude was <laughs> broke, didn't have nothing. I'm just playing. You weren't that bad, but you no, know, it was, it was speak on it. <laughs> oh, you know, And then he found God. He's a pastor as well. And here's the cool part, people. He actually has a YouTube channel as well. And he's making this YouTube channel so that he can help people. Uh, just know that you don't have to go over the road. You know, I've made the mistake myself, man. I've told people that they have to go over the road for six months to a year before they can go out there and start doing some other niche-focused trucking. So Nick is here to take uh, today to tell you that that's not the case, man. I mean, you could really get this. So, you know, yeah. I'm just letting people know what's up with that. And so I got, I got one other, one other purpose of my YouTube channel. Okay. My four year old, my four year old son uh, has autism. He's on the autism spectrum and he loves watching trucking videos on YouTube, bro. I got him into it. I was looking at some Peterbilt Steve videos and then he just, he just loved it. And then once we started watching videos with um, driving footage, he, he just loves driving footage, anything with driving footage, he's all about it. So uh, currently the truck I'm in has a really bad windshield with like a bunch of sap on it and stuff. So I can't do too much driving footage, but I'm yeah. still trying to get some in every video because I, I want him, you know, I'm doing it for him, bro. He's, he's my, he's my little man. So his name's hey. Gus. 
Hey, G- guys. Justin Bear <laughs> Jenkins. Yeah, bro. That's my, hey, that's my little let's boy. Go. I love yeah. it, man. You know, I don't have kids myself, but you know, uh, I'm telling Not you. Yet. Hey, if I have if I have a kid though, I'm gonna I already have a name picked out. I'm gonna name him Ollie. Not like Oliver, but Ollie like the skateboard move. Yeah, bro. My whole life I've skateboarded and the foundation of skating is the Ollie. If you could do the, the Ollie, Ollie you could do anything. <laughs> and exactly. so if I have a kid, I hope he doesn't get made fun of. But he's like, What's your name? <laughs> Ollie. Like what? Like the skateboard, you know? Yeah, like, bro. Hey, this know. is my little brother Kickflip. No. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, man. So let, let's get into the big part of this that people love to see, right? And before we start breaking down some money, people on the Asian My Show love money and they love to know what they can really get. Because I can't say this enough, but if I was a recruiter, I would do everything in my possible way to get you in that seat. It's the truth. If there's yeah. 500 drivers and one made 300,000 that year, I am going to say on every advertisement, you, you can make, you can make 300,000. You can make 300,000. But the truth is they're making 40, 50, 60. And that one guy might be working in Manhattan or have like a team driver. And so they never tell the truth on that. So Let's give us some perspective on this uh, before we start breaking it down and start showing this chart. How much money can you make as a company hazmat tanker driver? And I know you are an owner operator now, leased on with yeah. the company. Yeah. So there is a big difference. Now, before we get into that PL, um, was 2019 you as a company driver or were they both you as an operator? Both me as an owner operator, just 2019 okay. was terrible. Okay. <laughs> so I've been a, I've been an owner operator since uh, since six, 16, 17, 16, something like that. It's almost four years now. I've been dope, an dope, dope. Yeah. So so you got the experience. So tell us on the company side before we get into your numbers as an owner operator. Yeah. What kind of money? So just say they they take your advice. They watch this video. Uh, they they go talk to a mom and pop place. The guy loves their energy. They're paying for their CDL. They're going out. They find their first job. What are you making as a hazmat company driver? I was taken home, and this was four years ago, but I was taken home about, on average, $1,000 a week. So it wasn't, it wasn't anything that was going to blow my socks off. And that's why I really wanted to get into owner operating because I knew that's where I could, I could, you know, make a little more for my family. That was another week. Take home, take home, you know, so dude, um, you know that we did an interview with, uh, they're so nice. The team drivers for CRST, they've been on the road for six months and they're pulling three to 400 a week in that's their pocket. Crazy, bro. That's crazy. That's nuts. So I, I don't know what to say, but you know I, what I'm just, saying? That's crazy. So I Crazy. hope they're watching these uh, videos too. And I'm glad that they did that because some people don't have the courage because yeah. I would never talk crap. They're new exactly. drivers. Yeah. They were working in the factory and they tried something and they were promised money. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it didn't work out, but they showed it. So if you're looking at the company side, you're looking at working local home every day, a thousand bucks a week. That's legit. Right. So yep. Let's get into this and let's start looking into some of the numbers that you can actually make as a owner operator for a company like this. And I want to go to your 2019 first and we're going to break it down and we're going to look at it and you tell me what the heck we're looking at, brother. You know? All right. So, so gross is just revenue, right? Like, so that's what the truck made. It's pretty easy. Um, and then the, the net is kind of like a, um, uh, like an operating profit. So like after fuel insurance, trailer rental, truck payment, um, uh, I think that's that's about it. So after all that, now you still have your other write-offs that you get to write off and all of that. Um, you know, you got your depreciation and all that. So this isn't really like right. a tax a tax thing um, as far as like profit and loss um, on like from, from, a, from a CPA perspective. This is just like after your operating costs, what do you, what is the actual, like the net is like the check that they cut me each week. Hey, that's so, all we care about, bro. <laughs> exactly, bro. So that's, and, and everyone, you know, everyone's is going to be a little different. There's some guys that, that work, you know, where I'm at that are leased on that have newer trucks that have higher, higher payments. There's some guys right. whose trucks never break down. And you're like, dang, man, your truck never breaks down. Now you never have <laughs> shop bills. You know what I mean? Like it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. um, yeah. 
So looking at this, let's let's break it. Let's look at this. We see thirteen hundred, and this is two thousand nineteen people. So we see thirteen hundred, fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred, sixteen hundred. So on an average, we see eighteen hundred. You know, some days we'll keep it real. Five hundred eighty-eight bucks. You know, maybe a breakdown or something happened there, right? Okay. So, the, but here's here's the thing. I, I I'm I I wish I I wish I wasn't scared of the IRS boogeyman, and I could show you guys my settlement sheets, like the for real the real deal, because. My truck cost me, I did a YouTube video about it, but I think it was like $31,000 over like an 18 month period. Now I didn't pay any of that out of my pocket. Right. Uh, the owner of Silver Trucking put it on his account. He paid the shop. I paid him back over the course of about two years. So mm. every single one of these checks has repairs taken out of it. Like, oh, really? Like all kinds of repairs. And then when there wasn't repairs, I'm renting a truck when the truck's down. So there's, there's rental fees and, and all of that. So what he does, you know how these guys, uh, a lot of people, they'll end up with like $13 checks or like $10 right. checks because the company wants to get their money. Well, he's like, Hey man, you got kids. We're going to leave you. We're going to leave you enough money for you to live on. So that's what, that's okay. what 2019 was me getting all that stuff paid off and still bringing home enough to feed my family, pay my bills and, you know, have, have a little bit of a life. There's a, there's a week off somewhere in there where I, I went to uh, <laughs> where I went to Tahoe. With, you know, took my I promised my family a vacation, and we couldn't yeah. do too much. But we we went up to Tahoe and stayed there. Um, you know, Monday Monday through Thursday night or something like that. You know, the cheap nights when the when the rates are cheaper for oh, places come to on, stay. Man. You know? <laughs> hey, you're doing great, brother. You're doing yeah, great, yeah. man. Seventy thousand, staying home, kissing the babies. That's beautiful. Every day. Now, yeah. here here's the thing that I want to see is. Uh, you know, looking at this, you say you have you had a lot of breakdowns for for people that are watching this and want to get into uh, daily trucking. Right. And uh, get into local trucking. What kind of truck would you recommend? Because you see some guys, they're winning. Anything to stay away from from your experience, brother? Uh, well, I bought an 08 Peterbilt with a cat motor. And um, after I bought it, well, my first trip into the shop, which was really soon after I bought it, he goes, Oh, you got one of those 08 Peterbilts. And, uh, they had to put the, you know, I'm, I'm in California. So the land of all the restrictions for exhaust and everything. And so right. they had to put the aftermarket DPF filter on it. And once they put those on nothing, but problems, nothing but problems for that truck. And so, uh, yeah, it just had breakdown after breakdown after breakdown. And then, uh, I spun a bearing, um, shoot a while back and so basically it, blew it, your motor at that point right yeah so i was looking at a huge rebuild and then uh, that's when i started renting a truck and and um you know i i the the old truck is paid off and it, it uh it's actually getting traded into the state i got approved for a a, a voucher to to trade it in they're gonna crush it get rid of it because it's an it's a you know pre-emissions truck and right. uh they're gonna they're gonna give me down payment money for uh for a brand new peter bill so that's, hey, what, a that's lot another of my, video right there bro Hey, there's, <laughs> I, I'm updating some of that on my videos just because uh, I know people want to know about buying brand new trucks and how much. I actually put the, the 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 quote that the salesman gave me. I put it at the end of my my uh, most recent video, and it's a lot. I'll just tell oh. you that it's a lot. Oh, you got to watch dude. to the end though. Watch uh -oh. all the way to the end. Uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> he pulling the, the YouTube moves. So you know, oh. uh, let people know now for the 150 that are watching this live. Uh, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Uh, we're here today to learn how to go locally, uh, doing hazmat tanker, basically going from no experience but staying home. That's the big key of this. And so, here's the thing. Nick here, he's a pastor. He has four beautiful kids. And he has to be home. And a lot of you out there have to be home too. So if you're just new, jumping in right now, we're looking at his 2019. We're going from gross, net, but these this is after everything. This is what he's really making. And just for the quick update, uh, he had some problems. So the owner was taking out some money from the checks and he ended up with seven. Dude, 70000 for problems with your truck? Yeah, I, bro. That's a blessing, man. So what truck Dude. would you recommend uh, for people getting into this so they don't do the same thing? I mean, the, the truck I'm getting is going to have a, a Cummins in it. I know that. Um, something that, that has parts that are a little cheaper, a little easier to get. Um, cats mm -hmm. were good until the emission stuff came out. But um, yeah. but but yeah, now with we're looking at a, an emissions truck. I'm, I'm getting a Cummins. Um, I know some guys that have got some Detroits over through Freightliner. They've had good luck with those. And um, so those are the two that seem like parts are readily available when they break down. Um, right. And they seem seem to be 
the ones um, I got some some buddies that have pack car motors and their Peterbilts and um, they the the engines run good, but it's everything else around them that seems yeah, to yeah, not that's... you know not do do as well. So that's what I heard too, man. And you already know I got a finance business. So yeah, you know, <laughs> when you and your homies need to uh, get a truck or something like that, come through our finance business, man. We'll take care of you. So cool. l- let's look at this real quick. Uh, now this is 2020. So I'm looking at this. We see the gross, we see the net and we're in November, correct? Yeah. And so right here is October, always the 30th. Uh, we're missing just the sixth, but today is what the fifth. So we'll get the update on it soon. And you're already at two hundred thousand dollars gross and ninety eight thousand net. Yeah. My guy, congratulations! All right, you're, thank you're you, winning, thank you. man. So, check this out. We gotta uh-oh. have a cap. We gotta have a caveat. It, it, everything when you're working for a small company, right? You gotta you gotta say what's really going on because I had the opportunity to jump into grape season and uh, grape season around here in Central Valley. Um, well, you know, you, you've been up around Lodi. Yeah. It's just nothing but, but great, Wineries, great vineyards ever. And all that. Yeah. So, uh, so I was able to run that. And in California, you get, you get, um, an ag exemption on your hours of service. So I hustled the last, uh, <laughs> Working uh 20 hours a day, <laughs> 11 weeks, bro. I was putting in like a hundred hours a week, uh, six days a week. So those, the, the last 11 checks, that's where I really started stacking, um, uh, well, actually, I think what well, I've gotten nine checks of, of it so far. I think next week's probably my last one. Wow! 10, so I've, I think I've gotten ten checks. So anyway, so that's where that's where I really you can see the numbers jump up. You can see the the it's kind of just a crude profit margin over on that percentage on the right column. Uh, you can see where those percentages really jump when you're doing. I mean, just when you do that much revenue, your fixed costs are are you know are what they are, um, and so you end up with with you know a lot better. Uh, a lot better profit hey, margin so it's, there. It's jumping, bro. So, okay. So, as a – and for people watching, uh, this is uh, him as an owner-operator, okay? He's leased yeah. onto the company. So, just letting people know this. So, he's – his nets are looking about 1800 to 23 to 3. Uh, and then you see the ones right here. And then when you see it jump like crazy and start getting to the 4000s and stuff, you know, uh, thank you for being honest about that. So – Tell me this much then. If you work as a hazmat tanker locally and you're not doing all this extra stuff, yeah. but you do bust your butt, can you make um, 100K? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's – I mean, you figure you take out those last eight or nine checks that are on this this uh, thing, I was still on pace to make you know, 100K take home. I, I, love, sure. I love it. I mean, I, uh, I broke it down by quarter down there at the bottom, and you can see the 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 first three quarters are 100% hazmat tanker. You know, I, I didn't uh, the the grape season started in August, so like the second week of August or something like that. So um, those checks didn't start coming in until until September. So no, the third quarter, that. so for the first three quarters are all the hazmat stuff. So that's where uh, that's where that that kind of breakdown that shows you what I was on pace for. Um, you know, and it, it, this year, like, that's why I wanted to give you 2019 too, because 2019 was like the down year. And right. then 20, 2020, it's, it was a lot better. You could just see, um, I didn't break down that each year. I, I expand my spreadsheet I, I've made and, and kind of make it better. So this year I got the quarter breakdown last year. I didn't have it, but, uh, 2019, if you look at the first, just the first chunk of, uh, of checks, they were nowhere near what 2020 was, man. Like 2020 nah. just killed it. 2020 killed it. Just from the gross revenue standpoint, 2020, yeah. we came up big time, uh, January, February, when it's usually pretty slow, we were, we were rocking and rolling. We had a special contract that we were doing and we were just knocking them out. So it was, uh, it was good. Oh yeah. I'm seeing it right now. Cause I mean, 2019 was all right. The 2020 man, you, yeah, you we, put, you put the pedal to the gas, baby. Yeah, we were doing we were doing a little bit better, and and I have to say that my costs. Well, okay, so here's the thing: when when you're renting a truck, right? I, I have a right. I have a, a no um, uh, maintenance rental agreement with them, where they pay for everything that goes wrong with the truck. So my weekly is really high, but I have zero maintenance and repair costs that come out when I'm renting the truck. Cause that, you know, obviously I'm not, I'm not going to have to repair the truck. So even though my weekly net is a, probably a little lower than what you'd expect from a normal mm-hmm. owner operator, uh, I don't have those costs associated tire. I mean, you figure tires and oil changes is what, like 
five grand a year at least. And then you got anything that goes wrong with truck, any repairs you need, you know, if, if you get out under 10 grand in any given year, you're probably doing pretty good. So, I mean, you figure uh, I'm saving that even though I'm paying, I'm paying more than what a, a truck payment would be for my truck rental. You know, I'm, I'm like, wait, know, no, let's backtrack one second here. So you telling me you've been renting a damn truck this whole time and you still made this money. Yeah. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm, but I'm getting a deal on the truck too, bro. I'm getting a deal. It's, it's, I'm not doing right, it from like gonna, one of the dealerships. Yeah, so. yeah. We're gonna bring it. We're gonna bring it back. <laughs> how, okay. So our next video uh, with Nick is gonna be how to get that check because my my guy, uh, um, uh, Greg out in LA owns uh, Liberty Line Hall West. We're gonna get him on the show as well. Uh, he has he built from zero trucks to 150 himself, right? Oh, and so he had an old truck and they actually gave him a hundred thousand dollars to buy a natural gas truck. So oh, is that so, why so many people are running those? They asked me if I wanted that program and I was like, nah, man, I want the diesel. Well, <laughs> if you took the natural gas program, they would have gave you 50% of the money. Dang. So just letting you know, but no, Hey, diesel's good, man. Diesel's good. Yeah. You're good. You're good. So I gotta, I gotta rock with the Cummins, bro. I got hey, it. <laughs> I love it. So, Hey, for everyone that's seeing this, this is the net profit after uh, right now he has a deal going on with the dealership because he's buying another truck. Uh, watch the replay if you didn't see that. But if you have an older truck like mine, I have a 2010 International and just say you were able to make this work, you'd be making even more money. You know, if your truck don't break down. So as long as your truck don't break down, fingers hey, crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed, man. That, that's what that really is. So, you know, when looking at all this, brother, I mean. You're doing well, brother. And, uh, you know, we, we got a lot of good stuff here today. And so when looking at this, I want people and there's a hundred and what? 82 people in here. You know, nice. they're not here for me. They're here for you, Nick, you know, and they're interested in knowing how the heck to go from zero experience. So, you know, a quick replay on my part. He is a pastor. He has four beautiful kids. He has a YouTube channel and here's the thing. I'll show the YouTube channel, but you want to show people locally how they're making money, not having to go over the road because you want to see your kids. Right. And the, the crazy part about this is people really don't think they can do it. They really think they have to sign with the mega carrier and do this and that. And I couldn't believe that story. You told me, bro, like straight up. One of the guys that works for your company was in County was in county bro straight up county behind <laughs> bars zero experience people and saw your company go by and then after when he got out applied and they hired him yeah call your bro. mom and pop places people <laughs> hustle hard and know it so you know um you know any shout outs at all brother before we end this video yeah, uh, well, my my beautiful wife Jessica and uh, my four kids. I got Miles, Maggie, Lucy, and of course Gus. And uh, um, yeah, my brother he he reps uh, the the channel. He he uh, watches all my videos when they come out. So Heck love you guys, yeah. love you guys. And then um, yeah, uh, uh, there's actually a dude, and I'm pretty sure it's him because he doesn't have an avatar. But one of my newest subscribers, his name is uh, Fermin Perez, and there's a guy that. I think it's the same guy that I worked with in the grape season and we, we, uh, sub hauled during the grape season doing stuff. And so we were always out there running side by side and I didn't know he was on YouTube. And then, uh, I just got a new subscriber and that's a pretty unique name that mean Perez. So I think that might be him. So that mean, if you ever watch this, <laughs> what's up, buddy? Thanks, hey. for, thanks for following bro. Hey, that's what's up. So let's get into a little bit of Q and a, and, and, you know, we'll do about five minutes of this and just to see, uh, if you can answer any of their questions. So if you have a question about anything about maybe California, uh, my man here had a 2000, what eight Peter belt and yeah. he got it crushed. He got on the deal. He got some big money to go towards a new truck. So uh, if that or a hazmat tanker or what have you, let's get into this and, and let's see what's up. Um, you know, I apologize for anybody that uh, I didn't say hi to on here. Uh, we do have our moderators here. Uh, Cash is King Trucking. Uh, thank you for being here. If you guys do not know, Cash and King has a, a, a beautiful channel. Uh, he teaches people about trucking, owner operator, and he shows pay stubs too. So, you know, thank you for that. And, um, let, let's see if there are any questions and we could go into it. 
let's see let's see what's the name of his channel let me let me start by giving you some promotion here brother you know because that's what we do we about the love baby so his name of the tra uh, channel trucking california with is it vlogs or vlogs Velox. It's uh, it's Latin for for speed or velocity. It's the it's the root word for velocity in Latin, bro. Velox. I love it. Okay, I love it. Yeah. I love it. So uh, this is his channel. Right now he has thirty subscribers. So if you guys are interested in uh, just doing local and doing hazmat tanker, he'll tell you where he works. You know, he said in the video already. You know, he'll show you his money. He's showed it already. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, is is there uh, maybe even a, a email or something they could reach out to you, brother? Yeah, it's just uh, Nick at Velox18.com. Let's put that in the uh, let's put that in the comments section. Let's see. I know I'm gonna spell it wrong already. Okay, I'm going for it. Nick. Yep. Velox. Right. Yeah, at Velox. Yeah, at Velox18. Or, oh wait, 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 I did it wrong. Say your email one more time. Nick N I C K at Velox18.com. I was listening to a business podcast and they said, if you can't afford to get your domain name for 20 bucks and set up your email, then you shouldn't even be in business. And I was like, all right, I'll drop 20 bucks on the domain name. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Nick at uh, Velox 18.com. Okay. Yeah. People. So jump on there. Uh oh, dark light. Ari says I'm subscribed now. That's what's up. Uh, thanks you know what buddy. I mean? thanks, hey, buddy. that's what's up. Um, uh oh, you might be helping someone out right here. Someone says they from the Bay. So, What's up? so if you need help, email my guy here because he's shown us he's renting a truck and making money. This is crazy, man. And you know what? I, I say that, but I know that with the maintenance constant and how hard you have to run, uh, that yeah, it's probably worth it to rent a truck at times. Right. Yeah. If, so, if, you know, so Chapel or, or Chappelle or Chapel, hey, uh, look for me on Highway 4, bro. Highway 4. I'll see you out there running between Stockton and uh, Richmond. That's where most of our loads come out of. So hey, look for me. Hey, hey. So you got to give uh, Luis some energy here, man. He wants to become an owner-operator, but he's intimidated by not being a mechanic. What's the oh, energy bro. here? Oh, bro. Okay, so that's me. 100% that's me. Uh, like a thousand percent. So you find the, I'm telling you, if you go, I'm just going to rep them because I think that they're that good of a, of a, of a company, Silva trucking in Stockton, bro. So I'm not uh, a mechanic. My dad is actually, actually a mechanic. So he he's a pastor, but he's also a mechanic. He did. He was a mechanic for Nissan motor company for 30 years. He's a mechanic. I didn't get that, 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 that didn't trickle down to me in my genes. You know what I mean? Like I just, I, I can kind of like, if, if there's a bolt loose, I can use a ratchet and tighten it up. Other than that, dude, I'm not a mechanic. And I'm telling you, you don't have, I mean, it's, you're going to make more money if you can do your own work on your truck. But the fact is, is that with the way that I like to run, I like to keep the wheels turning. It's almost better. I mean, I still pay a little more if I pay someone to do it, but I can pay someone to do it, rent a truck from Silva Trucking and, and be rolling still making money that day instead of at home trying to figure out you know, watching YouTube, how, trying to figure out how to fix my own stuff. So yeah, I'm paying someone, but I'm also still making money. So my, my net loss is a little bit less than what you think it would be. Cause I'm, I'm able to still work when my trucks in the shop because, uh, because I work for a mom and pop shop that, uh, I mean, they got like almost a hundred trucks. So they usually got a truck that I can take and pay a rental fee, but I can go out and I can still make money. Um, and, and so, yeah, there's, there's there's downsides to not being a mechanic, but you can totally be an owner operator and and you know and and dude make friends make friends with mechanics, bro. That, that's what, that's hey, that, hey, that's the truth right there. Yeah, I ask man. when they're off work. I'm like, hey, when are you off work? Because I would like to schedule an appointment with you. I know you don't get none of this money, so even if it's you know even if it's half of it, it's worth exactly. the hustle, and they'll do it. And honestly. Some shops are so cool. Even their boss, if they come on their day off, they could use their own tools and work on the truck. They don't care. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So it's, it's just one of those things, man. You got to get a little creative. And uh, just to be honest, I don't know nothing about trucks. You know what I'm saying? So luckily, uh, you know, I have some friends that own shops and things like that. So it helps. So here's yeah. a big one that we didn't talk about right here, Nick. And maybe uh, you can discuss about right here. Um, Walk us through a day 
of your your job of what you're doing you know what i'm saying uh how many hours are you working days off what does that look like for a hazmat tanker per se okay so hazmat tanker i work sunday night through thursday night so like right now it's friday midday right and i i slept already i woke up about uh, 9 30 this morning because I actually got off a little early. So normally let's say I wake up like 11, 11 on 11 a.m. on Friday. I got the rest of the weekend off. I got all night Friday, all day Saturday, Sunday morning, go to church, come home, watch football, and then uh, usually take a little nap and go to work Sunday night. So I get almost every weekend off. I probably worked seven or eight Saturdays last year. And then this year, because I did the grape season, I was working every Friday night, but um but that, you know, that's just its own thing. It's, it's grape season. It's not the hazmat thing. So um, generally I'm working 12 to, to 14 hours a night um, when, when the money's right, you know, and then when it's not, then I'm working eight or nine hours. Um, basically the, the, the runs take about four to four and a half hours um, for most of the loads we do. So, I mean, we're, we're cycling, you know, if you got three of them, you're happy and you're working about 12 and a half, 13 hours and, and you're rocking and rolling. Uh, if you get a load that goes down to Fresno, we got a few of those, then, you know, you're going to do one, one local to Stockton and then run down to Fresno and back and half your miles are empty. So, you know, fuel is, um, is a little, a uh, little bit of a thing, but, um, but when you're half empty, half your miles are empty, then, you know, it's not, it's not as bad. So yeah, it, um, I, I put in probably 60 to 65 hours on the busy weeks and then, 40 to 50 on the slower weeks. And, um, yeah, man, it's, it's, it is, that's been the hardest part for me. Cause I have dreams and aspirations, right? Like I want right. to grow, I want to grow my, my career, um, past where I'm at, but it's so comfortable. It's just, it's so comfortable. Yeah. I get to see my family all the time. You know, if, if, if the buck stops with me on like where, like my, my own revenue. And if, and if there's like loads going out to where you're at in Florida and I'm like, Oh dude, I just, I got to take one of these loads because there's nothing local or there's no, there's no money in these other loads, you know? And then all of a sudden you're like, I, then I'm gone from the house for who knows how long, because, because I'm on my own authority and I'm trying to hustle and do my thing. So someday I want to get to that point. But for now, my kids are small. Well, my, my oldest is a, is a 16 year old. He's in high school and you know, I want to make it to some of his baseball games and I want to be able to, yeah. to go to my daughter's softball games and their dance recitals and their talent shows. And you know, my, my son Gus, you know, I get to see him all the time. I can't wait till he gets older and then, you know, we can go in the truck together. That's going to be uh, that, hey. that's, that's what I'm looking forward to in the future, man. That's, that's hey, when that's I think I'm going to go out on my own, bro. Is when I, when he's old enough to come with me in the truck and be my, be my co-pilot, be my navigator. That's yeah. when I think I'm going to be on my own on authority. But yeah, for now, now, dude it's it's comfortable man it's so comfortable and the and the company drivers i mean they only work the weekends if they want to they don't ever i mean i i don't know a single guy that that gets like you know forced to work um on a on a friday night saturday morning they just they it's a monday through friday gig man like it's just that's just how they roll over here and a lot of it's because they the main work they do is that the container work that goes to the port Mm -hmm. And then the, and then the, the hazmat stuff is like a, just a smaller division of, of the company. And so, um, for the most part, the hazmat stuff runs on, on Friday night and Saturday morning, but the, uh, but the, the container stuff, it, it stops for the weekend, man. Those guys don't work. You know, yeah, they, hey, they done. They, <laughs> yeah. They get Monday through Friday and then they go home and, you know, do whatever it is they do with, no, with whatever, bev <laughs> whatever beverage they choose. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a couple more questions and then, you know, we'll let you go, brother. Um, Hector Rodriguez says, is it a good time to become an owner operator? I heard slow season is coming January and February. So what are the slow seasons when it comes to local hazmat tanker work? If there's any. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think that's probably about the time. I think everything slows down January, February because of the weather, because of, you know, less people on the roads driving. So then uh, what I haul is actually a byproduct of the oil refining process. So mm -hmm. if they're refining less oil, you know, making less fuel, less gas, then they have less of the byproduct. Um, and that, there's some variables there with where they get the oil and how, how much sulfur is in the oil when they get it, how yeah. much it's going to produce and all that. But basically, yeah, like winter time, it slows down just like everything does. I mean, there's less trucks moving, there's less cars moving, there's less everything going from January and February and then it takes a while for it to pick back up. But you know, you, you plan for that, you know, as we a truck driver, they don't know. look bad. They don't look bad. Uh, those, well, that's what I was telling you, know you know last, I mean? last year, January, February was, or, you know, this year, 2020, January, February was off the chain. It was, it was, uh, it was on another level, but yeah, it's, that's the thing, man. Like we, we can, you can get by during those weeks and they, 
this company, man, they're really good about about feeding you. And I'm probably I'm probably the middle of the pack as far as about there's there's about 15 owner operators, and I'm probably the middle of the pack for my revenue. Yeah. There's a couple guys that get fed a lot, you know. They I think they chirp a lot, you know, in, in the dispatcher's ear and they get you, theirs. Hey, hey, and, hey, uh, it, it is what it is, man. I know, <laughs> I know what's up with that, man. And then uh uh you know, um no, I gotta at least say this one. Thank you so much for the five dollar super chat. I appreciate you. Um, so my man here says, I'm a fuel tanker, and I can tell you it was it when it's down, it gets easier than this. Only downside is long hours, but I'm home every day and the job itself is easy. So it's an easy job, but long hours. Is that, do you believe that to be true as well? Yeah, man. Yeah. It's, I mean, like what I haul is, is it's pretty simple, man. You load it yourself. Um, and then you go and unload it. You just hook up a hose to unload it. I mean, it's, it's uh, imagine this, if you're out there in a 53 footer right now, right. imagine, imagine pulling up to your shipper, you get in, scaled, loaded, scaled out in less than 40 minutes. You get to your delivery, you pull up, you, you hook up a hose, you gravity flow that stuff off the trailer, 25 minutes. Eh, That's it. I'm so when you're out business, there, man. yeah, when you're out there in a 53 footer and you're at this shipper for like three hours and they haven't even given you a door yet, just think of me, bro. I've already ran another load during that time that you've been sitting at that shipper or receiver waiting for that. I did, I did 53 footer for, for four months and I'll tell you, it was, it was hard, man. That was the hardest part going hey. to Safeway, Safeway and Tracy, man, I, I had some <laughs> naps in that, in that little dirt lot out there. I had some naps over there. <laughs> man, that's what's up, man. Well, no, I, I appreciate you brother for, you know, being on the show and, you know, at the end of all this, you know, is there anything that you want to leave people with before we let you go for the day? Man, just uh, don't don't say no to trucking because you got a family and you you know you want to be a family man. Um, don't say goodbye to your family to become a trucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, you know, I, I've heard you talk about it a few times. You know, you don't know if uh, someone else is walking your dog while you're gone. So hey, you know, yeah. you you got to be uh, you know, you, you, if you want to be about your family, if you want to be home, it's possible. Um, I don't, every, every market's different, but it's possible where I'm at. It's possible in, in, in other markets. I'm sure you just got to have your, your eyes out, your ears out. You got to have a, a willingness to, to go out and get it. And, um, don't, don't, uh, don't get discouraged by all these guys who, who make YouTube videos about their experiences with mega carriers, because, um, those, those are bad experiences, man. Like those, <laughs> those people, People post those for a reason because because right. it's it's not always good to go with those mega carriers. So, but that's not what everything's like. It's not that's not truck driving. That's mega carriers, and there's so many local local uh, trucking companies. So many that you just gotta gotta get one where you can look the owner in the eye and you can get a get a firm handshake from him. You can know that he's gonna treat you right. And uh, I'm telling you right now that with the way that my truck broke down and everything, mm -hmm. I should have I should have failed out of trucking three years ago. I should have. <laughs> I, Straight up, like I should have been flat on my face, like over here making YouTube videos about how bad trucking sucks. But instead, <laughs> I had I had Silva Trucking, and they had this safety net for me that that carried me through the hard times and kept me. Like I told you, man, like I I, I took like twenty something months to pay off my uh, my shop bills, and they didn't take it all out. They didn't leave me with like two hundred dollars on my check. They left me with like you know twelve hundred dollars on my checks and they they kept me kept me alive kept my family alive we we got through it all and um and you know they they want to they want to have long-term relationships with their owner operators they're not trying to to burn you and, and and move on to the next one you know they're trying to make sure that i'm hauling their loads you know next year the year after and the year after so that uh, they can serve their customers well and and they don't gotta go through training process every every three months you know what i mean no i love it man you know so. well you know I appreciate you so much, brother, for being on the show. Stick a uh, stick around uh, before I end it, brother. But um, right, cool. for everybody that's on here, if you get an opportunity, uh, you like what you're seeing from Nick. Uh, I love his energy. And, you know, for the 166 people that are on here live right now, you know, if you get the chance, you know, go over and show my man some love. You know, uh, he has a YouTube channel and he's trying to help people out how to get gigs locally. So if you guys get an opportunity, you know, this is it right here. Check it out. Trucking California with Vlogs 18. And uh, I think we're pretty much good to go. I think we've said everything. Uh, oh, yeah. One thing I didn't get to do. I always I always forget. I, I want to 
I want to play my intro. Let's let's go. Let's see. Let's do it. What's up, other truckers? You are now watching the Asian My Show live. Yeah, no, thanks everyone for you know <laughs> watching it and uh, uh, watching the show. Uh, you know, there's 170 people in here that uh, definitely, if they didn't get the chance to watch this on the replay, there's a lot of good insight about just how to get your CDL for one. Uh, the other one is how to get onto a hazmat tanker company with zero experience jumping in from the get go. Uh, we've told stories about people that are straight up in County in bars looking from the <laughs> inside out, outside in and applying for the job and getting it. So I appreciate you all. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Nick and keep on hustling people. You got this.